Well, hello and welcome to this photo speed video with me, Tim Jones. Today I'm going to be looking at the Shorelab D1000 and have a look at this lovely printer, get it out of the box to start with and have a look at what it can actually do. Now the D1000 is a printer aimed at print shops, print labs, and also like print houses as well, where you're dealing with a lot of images and you've got a high turnover of prints coming in and out of your business. So this is their latest offering, a new and improved, what they call dry lab. So really excited to actually try this as well, because there's a few features that they've introduced on this model that really kind of help you and will improve your business, but also efficiency as well. So a lot of savings as well. But before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Just click that subscribe button in the bottom right. And also don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter as well. And you can do that on photospeed.com. Now the newsletter gives us is a weekly update on all the news here at Photospeed, but it also gives you exclusive discounts as well on all Photospeed products. Also, don't forget about the Photospeed Art of Printing, the free ebook from us here at Photospeed. Please don't forget to download it, have a look at it. It gives you an overview of everything from turning on your printer to printing, to framing, to bookmaking, and is a good start for anyone looking to get into printing, but also for anyone who's been printing for a while, just wants a little brush up on their skills. So that's the Photospeed Art of Printing, the free ebook from Photospeed. And you can download that from photospeed.com. Okay, so without further ado, got all the housekeeping out of the way, Let's dive in to the Shorelab D1000. Okay, <clears throat> so I've got the printer out of the box and it's really nice. I have to say that this, I've worked with the D800 and also the D700, which are the models that preceded this one. And I have to say the big thing I noticed when I was taking it out of the box is the weight. The weight saving on this printer is fantastic. It is a lot lighter than the D D800. That's the first thing that instantly kind of struck me about this printer. I haven't plugged it in yet though. So print quality wise, I'm expecting hopefully this to be a lot better as well. Now, the other big change is there's no longer cartridges with the printer. So the ink comes in these like Tetra Pak bags that go in the front of the printer. So you can just lift down this flap here and I've got the magenta here. So that just on the other side there. And these little drawers here, they just pull out and then you can then pop the ink in into here and then just close the drawer and then you're good to go. Really, really nice idea. Um, you get quite a bit more ink in these and cuts down on all that plastic waste and things that you get with cartridges as well. Tiny little bit of plastic at the top here and a little handle as well. Um, but yeah, really nice. Nice addition, I think. Hopefully they'll bring this throughout the other printers in the Epson range as well. Now I should say that these ink cartridges hold 25% more ink than the cartridge versions, which were in the D700 and 800. So, you are getting a lot more ink in here. Pricing wise are quite comparable, tiny little bit more, but not, not massively. But yeah, really, really good. Really like these. Now, another thing that Epson say about this printer is over the D800, they've improved the print speed and the prints per hour. So they do say that this printer can print up to 385 prints per hour without sacrificing any quality. You can put it on either standard or high and it will churn out these prints at an alarming rate. So really, really quickly. Now, the other thing this printer has that its predecessors didn't was the wireless and LAN setting as well. So no longer do you have to just rely on USB, you can actually connect it over your Wi-Fi network and also through your ethernet as well. So really, really nice addition there. If you subscribe to the ReadyPrint kind of scheme, then it's connected to a network, which is connected to the internet. Epson can actually just, as you're getting low on a cartridge, it can be automatically kind of sent out to you. 
Not too sure if I'll be happy with that, but it's, it's there if you want it and I can understand. If you're in a high production environment, then I can see where that would be a massive kind of advantage and it's one less thing to think about when you're thinking about trying to keep all your lovely customers happy and all these prints are coming out at 385 prints per hour out of this printer. It also has a new nozzle detection system within the printer itself, which can self-diagnose its own problems effectively. So if you do have this printer connected up to your Wi-Fi network and the internet, and you do have a problem, like the printer goes down and your kiosk isn't working, etc., or you have a printer that goes down in your lab, and you want to kind of have a kind of panicking because it's part of your business and a, a printer that's down is costing you time and money. So what we can do is Epson can actually dial in to the printer and tell you what's wrong with it effectively. Also, it can then run automatic cleans and things just to see if that will clear everything through for you. And if all else fails, there is the service part of the printer as well. And Epson will be able to service it for you. And if you buy them through PhotoSpeed, you just contact us and we will be able to arrange all that for you as well. But what Epson are saying is this new technology, this nozzle detection software and things within the printer, it means that the printers will be down for less time. They are more reliable. They hopefully will last a bit longer as well. But there is that confidence that these printers will not break down and they are more reliable. I can't promise they won't, but they will be hopefully more reliable and will print for longer as well. So you can rely on it for your business and a real nice step up in that reliability. Okay, so let's talk media. Now, we sell a range of dry lab materials and they come from everything from 3.5 inches right up to the eight inches that this printer can take. I have a six inch roll here, which is the glossy, and we also do it in luster as well. Now this paper goes in to the printer at the front here. Now you just take off the front panel, which is the feed tray and also the waste collector in there as well. You pull that down. If you're ever in doubt how to load, some, how to, how to load the paper, all the instructions are actually on the back of this piece. So then what you need to do is just pull out this drawer and then you have the spindle here that you can load your paper to. And then we can go back in. Really, really nice and easy to use. I think they've they definitely kind of, I think, improved things a little bit in that kind of respect. It's, it's the same process as the 700 and 800. However, for me, it feels a little bit easier. I don't know why, but it's exactly the same process. So, but anyway, um, you've still got Epson's a lovely, nice, nice and easy kind of spindle things here with the handles as well. Just pull them and off they come which is absolutely fantastic. And you can just load your paper onto one of these spindles like this, just drop it down and it fits quite nicely and snug in there. So then once you've done that, you just have your paper loaded and you can pop it in the printer and get it all nicely loaded up. So let's do that. Let's put the inks in, get it all nice and loaded up, put some paper in, and I'll show you how easy it is just to get a print out of it I'm not gonna go in, so Epson, Epson have released a new piece of software with this printer as well, but I'm gonna do that in a separate video so it can take you through the order process and how that piece of software works um, and how it can simplify your life a little bit with this printer. This printer can also work with RIPs as well, so it will work with Mirage, um, but you can print through Lightroom, Photoshop, absolutely everything as you would normally with this printer, but if you want the high volume in there, there are specialist pieces of software that can that can integrate this printer into kind of the booth setting. So if you've got your booth in your shop, uh, or you're in, or you're doing kind of wedding booths and photo booths at weddings and things like that, this printer can be integrated into all those systems with the touch screens and things like that. It's a really really nice bit of kit. Okay, so let's get everything set up, put the paper in, and let's just make a print and see how we go. Okay, so let's get the inks in.
Now, I've done some prints. You may be, be able to hear it just in the background there, it's still whirring away a little bit. But I've done some prints and I have to say, apart from me not quite getting the size right when I actually printed it, but they're really, really nice prints. This is on the gloss paper, so there's that sheen to it. But they've come out really, really nicely. I have to say, it's a pretty decent black and white as well. I mean, you haven't got the gray inks in there. So, okay, it is a little bit on the green side. A tiny, tiny little bit being hypercritical. But if you're comparing it against say the P700 or something like that, that's a G clay fine art with gray inks and things, then yeah, there is gonna be a slight difference. But for color pictures on kind of this, this gloss, this 250 gloss we've got, I mean, they look really nice. The color rendition is fantastic. Those dye inks really make things just pop off the page and it just looks, they just look brilliant. I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit, I'm not too shocked, but I'm, I, I am really quite happy with the print results and things. They look absolutely fantastic. Now, the other little party trick this printer has is it has a top feed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna try and put through some platinum etching just to see how it, how it copes with this as well. So the top feeder is just in the top of the printer here. And you very simply just pop a sheet of paper in like this, and then we can tell it to use that to print from. Okay, so let me click print and we'll see how we get on. So how did it handle platinum etching? Absolutely fine. Produced a beautiful print, actually. Um, I'd be happy with this on any printer, to be honest. I mean, the dry lab is fantastic. It really does a fantastic job. It can do those fine art prints and it looks great. I mean, it's only A4. That's the biggest size it can do through this rear feeder but it's, it's nice and sharp, it has lovely color. I mean, it looks pretty similar to the one on the screen I've got over here. It's great, it's lovely. Now, you can profile this printer as well. Like I've had some custom profiles made with it as well, so it works even better. However, it prints great out of the box. I mean, all these little prints here, we're just using printer manager's colors, letting this do, do the work, and they look fantastic. They look absolutely brilliant. Really impressed with it, as I should really. I mean, it is Epson's lab machine, their dry lab machine, their sure lab as they call it. So it is gonna be good. Now, there are two versions of this printer. There is the one I've got on the desk here. Now this is without the duplex unit. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video on the duplex unit and how you put it on and how it all works and things, but Really, this video was about getting it out of the box, setting it up, getting some prints off it, and just having a look, and really just seeing what the D1000 can do. So I hope that's kind of been useful and giving you a little bit of introduction into the printer. Like I said, now I'm gonna be doing some more deep dives into the software and the duplex unit in the coming days and weeks. So look out for those, and I'll put them all in a playlist as well for everyone. But as always, don't forget to subscribe to the Photospeed YouTube channel. Don't forget also to sign up to our newsletter for exclusive discounts and all things, and all the news from here, us here at Photospeed. And don't forget to download the Photospeed Art of Printing if you need a little bit of a helping hand with your printing. Now, like I said, keep subscribed to the channel because we have new videos coming out every Thursday. Also, I will be posting these new videos expanding on today's video on the duplex unit and software and things. So please click that subscribe button and then you won't miss them when I actually release them. So click that subscribe button to just make sure you don't miss them when I release them. Okay, so I hope that's been useful. And on that note, I'll see you next Thursday. Bye-bye.